So I wanted to take the time today to respond to most of your questions regarding different kinds of setups to be used on the DJI Ronin SC and also to try out some of the things that you guys, which I'm grateful for, the different solutions that you gave to me regarding Sony A6500's issues that I actually asked for help yesterday. So thanks guys, I will be taking the weekend to actually try to do all the different setups and also the different solutions that you guys gave me. So really, really thanks for that and also I was looking through one of the comments on one of my videos and there was someone who actually responded to the Sony a6500 video yesterday which had a very familiar name I didn't really realize that until after I was looking for some DJI running SC updates and I ran through one of the websites and the name was the same name as one of the youtubers that commented on my Sony a6500 video giving Giving me some solutions on how to fix the issues that I had so I'm not so sure if the same person but this guy is actually the senior product manager at DJI so it really was him that would have been so cool to get someone from DJI actually responding to my video and giving me a solution so that's pretty cool I did ask him but he hasn't responded yet so I'm not so sure whether it is the same guy from DJI or not like I said I wanted to respond to most of your questions and also try out the solutions that he gave me but I realized that I forgot to show you two different setups on whether or not it will work. Firstly, this giant piece right here, which some sort of resembles the uh, Canon 1DX Mark II. Of course, it is not as heavy as the Canon 1DX Mark II. This is actually my Panasonic G9, which I have been doing a lot of videos on the DJI Ronin SE, but with the battery grip. So it some sort of looks like the Canon 1DX Mark II, but will this battery grip with the additional weight and I'm using the Sigma 16mm f1.4 lens the heaviest lens that I have for my Micro Four Thirds cameras so will this setup this bulky setup actually work on the DJI Ronin SC so I wanted to share with you that and also in contrast this camera which I was supposed to do a setup on like a few days ago and I totally forgot about it this is the EM1. This is the first mirrorless camera that I bought and it's really really good for 350 bucks. It has 4K video of course in crop mode. It has 1080p with EIS and the EIS is pretty good and it is using a Sony XMAR sensor. This is a micro four thirds camera so I do put on my Panasonic lenses and stuff on this camera and taking photographs this 20.4 megapixel camera for only 350 bucks so that's why I bought it and the photographs when you shoot in raw are really really good if you want to check out the image quality on the pictures and the video I actually have released video on it and I was using this lens which is pretty heavy this thousand dollar lens a micro four thirds lens it is the Panasonic Lumix 7 to 14 millimeters works really really well on the EM1 I'm gonna test out this setup as well just to show you because this camera has been pretty uh, popular nowadays I've launched a few videos and I got quite a bit of views on the EM1 M1. So that's why I wanted to show you this setup which is so light whether or not it will work on the DJI Ronin SC. Firstly this is the kit lens and then later on I will throw on the heavier Panasonic Lumix lens on the EM1 body. So two setups that I'm gonna cover today and we're gonna start off with the giant one Panasonic G9 with the battery grip and the Sigma 16mm f1.4 lens so let's get to it. So this video won't be a tutorial just to let you know I have other videos with tutorials on how to set up on the different cameras such as the Panasonic G9, the Sony a6500 and the Canon 200D. So I'm just gonna show you in this video a quick one whether or not this setup will work on this gimbal. So I'm gonna tell you the weight firstly the total weight of the camera we all know that the DJI Ronin SC's payload can take a maximum of 2,000 grams this setup alone weighs about 1,400 grams and I've already mounted the quick release plate you can see the distance from the quick release plate to the lens so using a lens mount won't even reach the lens still a distance away so I'm gonna leave this out and just go with one screw and the quick release plate i don't really think that this will work but we're gonna try it out okay so we're gonna start the mounting right now this is a real bad idea so i'm gonna release the that and we'll see whether or not i can get this to balance okay 
Oh, it's balanced. I'm gonna screw in the marker and I'm gonna tighten it for a second. So it is tilting to the left, so I gotta shift it more to the right. Hopefully my gimbal doesn't break. All right, so we got that settled. So because you can see that the, the top of the camera actually touches the axis, so basically it doesn't work because really really too heavy for example if I were to try to do the tilt map balance it touches this so in order to so I need to point it downwards and see if it stays in place but if I point it downwards I actually had to remove the lens cap as well because this was too large and if I were to make it balance downwards it would be at this angle which is almost maximum see it's almost maximum it's not almost maximum, it is maximum. You can see that it's not touching the bottom of the axis, it's actually balancing. But the thing is, this would be considered sort of balanced, but the thing is, I can't move it up because the plate is touching the axis. So, yep, that's not possible to mount. So this kind of setup is not possible to mount as we've just found out. So basically something like the Canon 1DX Mark II will definitely not be able to be mounted on this uh, DJI Ronin SC and it probably will work on the DJI Ronin S instead. Yep, so conclusion, a camera this size with the battery grip doesn't work. So we're gonna move on to the EM1 which is uh, really really small with the kit lens. is really really light and I believe it will encounter the same problems as the Sony a6500 with the kit lens that we I actually did the video yesterday so let's get to it yep so I got my EM1 with the quick release plate no camera riser as well because the lens is particularly small and we're gonna try it out I did I didn't put it all the way too heavy I put it somewhere in the middle so that it can probably balance better so this is the kit lens I think this setup would probably be less than 500 grams really really light i believe is going to be the same problem as the uh, sony a6500 right so we got the same problem the sony a6500 because it is too light so the em1 also doesn't work with the kit lens yep there's no way of balancing the tilt axis i've tried all the with the kit lens i've tried all the different um parts of the quick release plate from heavy all the way to light and all the way to the top it doesn't work on this lens so we're gonna throw on the Panasonic Lumix G9 lens and see how that goes okay so I've got the Panasonic Lumix 7 to 14 millimeters lens on the EM1 body and it looks pretty pretty nice pretty cool Let's see that and I got a camerizer because the lens is pretty pretty big and got a quick release plate on so let's try it out and hopefully this will work so i've got both the axis settled and right now i'm gonna do this one whoa cool it works okay so it seems like it's a setup. Alright. Let's see if it works. So we got that mounted. Looks pretty cool. The EM1 with the Panasonic Lumix 7 to 14 millimeters f4 lens, which is a total setup. The uh, EM1 is about 280 grams and the Panasonic lens weighs in at 300 grams so 20 grams more than the em1 body so that's why i think this works out pretty well uh, let's try it out let's power it on so far no vibrations like the sony a6500 not a compatible camera so um, i did try out this uh, it has a micro usb port and I did try this cable out, the micro USB cable, but since it's not a compatible camera, it doesn't work, but I did try it out anyway, so let's test it out. Yep, all right, I'm gonna test it out. First thing, I'm gonna try out the joystick, then I'm gonna start walking around.
and I gotta try a barrel roll. Right, so that's pretty cool. That actually works very, very well. Perfect weight, this camera setup between the EM1 body and the Panasonic Lumix 7 to 14 millimeter lens. All right, so finally we got at least one setup working. This setup is perfect when I was actually walking with it. It's so nice and so light, and the weight balance and everything was perfect barrel rolls and, and stuff so this is a pretty good setup a small body which shoots 4k when you shoot in 4k there's no stabilization but if you since you're using a gimbal with an ultra wide angle lens it's a really really nice view and it shoots really great raw photographs very high dynamic range and it uses a sony xmar sensor micro four thirds mount so you can throw on any panasonic and olympus lenses and stuff so this is a really nice suit for the DJI Ronin SC so if you are considering a camera and a lens and the gimbal which is practically everything this is a really really nice setup yeah just pretty stoked that at least one setup worked perfectly so thanks guys for watching hope you enjoyed this video on the last two camera setups that I have in my equipment and I am planning on borrowing two more cameras the Fujifilm X-T2 and the Sony A7 Mark III so thanks guys for watching hope you enjoyed this video hit the subscribe button hit the like button and the notifications button and I'll see you in the next one peace